So I thought it might be fun to walk through some of my old PC game collection to talk about some of the titles that turned me into the game liker I am today. I've already made videos about some of them, though often focused on one particular aspect of the game and not generally why I like them, like Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2, Civilization 2, and LEGO Racers. But there's definitely some that I don't think I've ever talked about on this channel and that you may not have heard of at all. The first of these games I'd like to talk about is Encore and Asheron's Pirate Hunter Seize and Destroy. Pirate Hunter was one of the defining games of my youth, and I wanted to bring it to your attention because there really isn't a remarkable amount of anything on the internet about it. When I went to try to find gameplay for this video, I discovered that searching Pirate Hunter Seize and Destroy Gameplay 2003 on YouTube doesn't yield any accurate results. It will get you some of the soundtrack selections, but no gameplay. In order to find the gameplay you're looking at right now, I had to search for the European title of the game, Tortuga, Pirates of the New World. Without having any way of properly tracking how much I played this game as a kid, I would be surprised if it was anything less than 100 hours. Pirate Hunter, or Tortuga for our viewers across the ponds, was delightful. Set in the heyday of naval piracy in the Caribbean, Pirate Hunter was, in a way, my first introduction to RPG mechanics. There are a few different campaigns to complete in slightly different eras of Caribbean colonialism, and you'll play as a privateer for one of four major colonizers, Denmark, England, France, and Spain. But no matter what starting nation you pick for your campaign, opportunities will arise for you to purchase letters of mark from other countries, which will help increase your standing with said nation. But enough about the torrid history of Europe's involvement with the many island nations of the Caribbean. Keep your politics out of my games. There are a whole mess of ships you can capture and collect during your voyages, from the meager sloop all the way up to the impressive ship of the line. Pirate Hunter is also the game that taught me the word Carrick, which according to the Oxford Dictionary is a large merchant ship of a kind operating in European waters in the 14th to the 17th century. You can imagine my frustration when, in the year 2021, my wife and I were trying to complete the daily spelling bee section of the New York Times crossword app, and though all the letters were available, it would not accept the word Carrick. It's a ship type with a Wikipedia entry. Also, speaking of famous European colonizers, the Santa Maria was a Carrick. Oops, looks like we're steering awfully close to politics again. Thanks, New York Times. Pirate Hunter has trading. There's a bunch of different mission types which I won't go into in detail, but we'll outline here in lightning fashion. Retrieve goods from sunken ships, deliver cargo, deliver mail, loot enemy ships, capture wanted pirates, capture enemy buccaneers, explore enemy ports, protect ports from pirates, blockade a port to decimate it economically, annex a port. There's always some sort of other endgame goal to each campaign, not explicitly associated with any of these mission types, with the exception of some campaigns where your goal from the outset is to annex ports for your associated nation. And that's a good jumping off point, or if you'll allow, a walking off the plank point, to talk about the combat of Pirate Hunter. The combat takes place in a square of open ocean of fairly large size, though not so huge that you'll lose track of your opponents if they sail off too far, displayed from an almost top-down perspective. Wind will be blowing in one specific direction, creating an invisible obstacle for you to worry about during the battle. When combat begins, your ship will automatically begin moving forward, the speed of which depends on how your ship is oriented relative to the direction of the wind. You'll steer by dragging your cursor off the bow of the ship and fire your cannons by clicking. Tactically, the combat is pretty shallow, though it does require some forethought in and out of combat. Though your enemies will be able to fight you with a whole fleet of ships, you can only command one ship at a time, even if your own fleet is more expansive. If you have multiple ships, you can pick which one you'd like to take into battle, and you'll discover that sometimes the biggest ship isn't the best option. 
In combat, you'll be able to switch between three types of cannon ammunition, one to target your enemy's sails, one to target their hulls, and one to target their crew. Your choice will likely be dependent on what you'd like to get out of each specific combat encounter. If you come across a valuable, powerful ship, you'll want to take out their crew to make boarding the enemy ship easier. But if you encounter a famous pirate with a big bounty on their head, you'll want to send that ship to the bottom of the ocean. And cannon ammunition is not unlimited. You will run out if you're not careful and don't regularly resupply in port. There's no worse feeling than when you've found a nice ship you want to capture, realizing you don't have any more grape shot to take out their crew, and you're forced to sink the opposing vessel instead. There is also a second type of combat encounter involved specifically with port annexation. Certain nations at times will want to expand their nations further across the Caribbean and they'll commission you to do so. Also played from an almost top-down perspective, you'll attack a city's shoreline defenses and once you've hammered the city with enough cannon fire, you can annex the town for your associated nation. Now, even with how little I was able to find about this game's North American release, I found PC Gamer gave it a 72. And by their rating system, that's good. Surprisingly, I also found some mentions of this game on the GOG forums from 2020. You can't buy the game on Steam or GOG, but it is available to buy DRM-free on a very poorly named website called GamersGate.com. Perhaps Pirate Hunter will one day end up on one of the more mainstream PC gaming services, but until then, you can grab yourself a physical disc from resellers or go track down that DRM-free version. Pirate Hunter was an especially formative game for me because if you watched our review of No Man's Sky Origins, you'll recall I discussed my lifelong love of spaceflight combat simulators. Well, this was the predecessor to that, both from a gaming perspective, but also a historical one. My love for nautical stories and naval combat was a natural springboard into space stories and space combat. It's even something I talk about in my original science fiction novel, The Hollow Sun, where I wrote that space was like the Old West, or maybe it was like the Caribbean during the heyday of naval piracy. Maybe it was a bit of both. The horse and the galleon had been replaced some time ago by huge pressurized tin cans, and someone had thought it would be smart to mount giant guns to the outside of all the cans. So what are the weird, unknown games that defined you? Let us know down in the comments, and I'll see you next time on Games That Defined Us when I talk about Pop Top Software's Railroad Tycoon 3. See you next time. Hey everybody, this is uh, Jake Terrio with Subpixel. Um, Will says I can't come back to the studio unless you like and subscribe. And if you leave a comment, he even says he'll give me a warm uh, blanket. So uh, please do that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video.